Good morning, my beautiful diamonds and my Hershey Kisses, along with my Teletubbies. You thought I forgot about the Teletubbies? No! You will always be my Teletubbies. Terms of endearment. Now, today is President's Day. I'm off. I have the hold. I feel so amazing. Today, I feel good. I feel, I can't even put, oh, oh, I just feel so good. Today, I, I know I woke up a little uh, late because when you get a chance to sleep in late, baby, I think you should take full advantage. Normally, on Saturday and Sunday, I get up at 9 or 10 o'clock. Uh, and on the holidays, I'll get up at like normally, I don't know what, 9 o'clock because that's when you start work at 9 o'clock. Uh, normally, Monday through Friday, I'm up at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, if not 3 o'clock. So when I get a chance to get that little extra rest, I, f I take full advantage. So now, my darlings, we're going to talk about trust God's decisions. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. Yes, God's riches are very great. His wisdom and knowledge have no end. No one can explain what God decides. No one can understand his ways. If only this situation would change, I would be happy. That's what a lot of people say when their souls have been wounded. They are miserable in their pain and they think if something would just change for them, everything would be better. People suffering the hurt of rejection or abandonment tend to think their lives would improve if they had a good friend, a loving family, or a spouse. People in unhappy marriages sometimes believe things would get better if they could just have a child. And those who live with strife and worry because of having a wayward child are convinced things will improve when that child leaves home. People who have been mistreated or abused long for someone to be kind to them because they think that will relieve their pain. Often we believe the solutions to our problems are in things we want God to give us or do for us. We pray for him to do these things and we become frustrated when he does not. In the short book of Jude is a verse we might easily overlook, but it teaches a very, very important lesson about what can happen when someone does not trust God's wisdom and God's direction. It says, it will be bad for them. They have followed the way that Cain went to make money. They have given themselves to following the wrong way that Balaam went. They have fought against God like Korah did, and like Korah, they will be destroyed. What did Cain, Balaam, and Korah have in common? All of them tried to get something God was not giving them. Cain was jealous of Abel because Abel had God's approval and Cain wanted it, so he killed him. Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 through 8. Balaam disobeyed God and chose worldly honor over doing God's will. He then became so deceived that God had to speak to him through his donkey to get his attention. Numbers chapter 22, verse 22 through 31. Korah resented Moses because he wanted the position and power Moses had. His rebellion end up costing him his life. Numbers chapter 16, verse 1 through 33. Cain Balaam and Korah all sinned in order to try to get something God was not ready to give them. They thought they knew better than God. They thought they knew better than God did what they needed and what would make them happy. They all suffered greatly because they did not trust God's wisdom and they chose to make their own decision instead. I assure you, my beautiful diamonds, Teletubbies, and Hershey Kisses, that God is aware of your situation and your struggles. 
He wants to heal your heart and to fill your life with peace, love, and joy. He knows what you need, how you need it, and when you need it. So I encourage you today not to try to make things happen for yourself just because you think they will make you feel better, but to trust God and Jesus Christ's decisions and let them do what he needs to do in your life, in his way, and in his timing. So I want you to declare this. I trust God's decision for my life and I will wait for him. Now keep in mind how Jehovah God works through his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, he works through the Holy Spirit. And also keep this in mind. That it is so important for us to find value in every season of our life. And keep in mind this very important part, uh, point too. That the things that we feel are important at the age of 30. That's not what we're going to feel is important at the age of 40, 50 and up. So when you don't get what you ask God for, have you ever stopped to think that it's best for you to trust Jesus for not picking you right now or giving you what you want right now? It's not time yet. It's not yet, not right for the moment, not right now. Or maybe Jesus feels that you're not ready. Have you ever considered that? Or what about he has something better in mind for you. Jesus Christ could also be trying to teach you that you need some things that you need to adjust or work on. Maybe you need to change your attitude on some things. So you could go to Jehovah in prayer and say, Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Jehovah, please change me. Please show me the areas that I need to change and please help me to change them. And also keep in mind that you will have to pass several tests before you can move on to the next level. You're gonna to have to pass these tests before you move on and it's not gonna be a minute, a day sooner until you pass those tests. You're gonna to have to keep taking that same test over and over and over again until you pass. Like me, I'm working on patience. Oh, oh my God, you had to hear the way I spoke to someone yesterday at Walmart because I have things delivered to my home. And I was just like, totally, oh, whatever. I was so rude and I had to call back and apologize, humbly apologize because I was just so upset because I thought they took money out of my account, uh, you know, without giving me what I ordered. But it turned out I was wrong. And when you're wrong, you have to humble yourself and apologize. So I had to humble myself and apologize profusely. And they were so kind. They said, that's okay, ma'am. We get calls, you know, people are frustrated. And, you know, a lot of times people have a lot on their plate. And then I said, thank you so much for your understanding. At the same time, that does not excuse my behavior. I had no right taking out my frustrations on you. So please forgive me. And they was just so amazing. I appreciated that. So we have to learn to trust Jesus Christ. We have to learn to trust him so much that we don't want anything that he doesn't want us to have. Not now or not ever. And have you ever stopped to think about also that we need to stop praying to God to give us what we want. And let's start praying to God through his son Jesus Christ to give us what we can handle. You'll be surprised how we ask for things that we're not able to handle right now. And Jehovah and Jesus Christ, they already know that. I always ask Jehovah God to never give me anything that's going to take me away from him. And if I try to get anything that is not God's will, then please slam that door in my face. We may have a calling that we are good at or that is our gift, but we need to be equipped with some kind of experience before God will permit that to happen. And don't be in such a hurry to try to get what you want and going where you feel you need to be 
Wait on God and Jesus Christ's timing. They know what's best for you. And that's it for today, my darlings. No questions or, yeah, I'm going to give you some questions. I'm sorry. I just have to do it for you. Okay, here we are. Who am I? I ate from the tree in the middle of the garden. My wife was Eve. I was the first person God created. Genesis chapter 2 and 3. Who am I? Next, an angel told my earthly father my name. When I was 12, I stayed behind in Jerusalem at my father's house. Through me, the word became flesh. Matthew chapter 1, 20 through 21. Luke chapter 2, verse 41 through 52. And John chapter 1, verse 14. Who am I? There you have it, my darlings. I hope you enjoy your day off if you are at home. Uh, I love you very much. But more importantly, Jehovah loves you. And Jesus Christ, he died for you. So what does that tell you? He loves you so much. And I want you to enjoy your day.